So the next presenter is Don Coleman from Chariot Solutions, and uh, he's going to be talking about PhoneGap plugins. <laughs> Hopefully, it goes well. <laughs> no pressure. So, hi, I'm Don Coleman, and I'm going to talk to you about PhoneGap plugins today. So, you know, why do you need PhoneGap plugins? PhoneGap's got a lot of APIs. Uh, but sometimes you want to do stuff that's not available. So PhoneGap plugins are one way to do that. There's a uh, lot of PhoneGap plugins out there. In the, uh, on GitHub, there's a PhoneGap project with PhoneGap plugins in there. But sometimes you want to do something that they haven't done, or maybe there's a plugin that's not supported for your platform. Um, there's some good examples of plugins like the uh, Child Browser plugin, and I think the Barcode plugin work across almost all the platforms. And then, you know, there's some one-off stuff. I've done a plugin for NFC that works on Android, and then most recently we did WebWorks with that. So today I want to kind of talk about what the parts are so you can understand how plugins work and that you have the uh, knowledge you need to start getting right, start uh, writing your own plugins. I was a little intimidated by writing plugins at first, but once I started getting into it, it's really not that complex. From the JavaScript side, there's one API you need to know, and then each of the platforms has a fairly straightforward API. So plugins are comprised of JavaScript and native code. Um, and depending on what you're doing, there's varying degrees of how much of your code is going to be JavaScript or native. And then there's also a little bit of configuration, which is just kind of necessary evil to get you uh, through the things. So we'll talk about JavaScript first. This is the magic method here, the uh, native, the JavaScript to native bridge. Uh, Cordova exec is what all the platforms use uh, internally to call the native implementations, and it's what we're also going to use to call the plugin. So there's these five, um, five arguments here. The success and failure callback are called by Cordova after your plugin executes in order to get information back to JavaScript. The service, action, and arguments are how we get information to our plugin. The service is the name of the plugin that we want to call. The action is just the function on that plugin we want to call. And then arguments is zero or more arguments we're passing into our plugin. I'm going to shorten the uh, success and failure callback to win and fail since they're easier to say and they fit on slides better. So for this today, we're going to look at a Hello World plugin. A Hello World plugin is very trivial. It's nothing we couldn't implement in just JavaScript. But the nice thing about this is it allows us to look at the interaction between the JavaScript and the native code without getting caught up in any of the messy implementa implementation details that you'd normally run into with native code. So for this Hello World plugin, we're going to need some callbacks for that success and failure callback. And basically what we're going to do is we're just going to take whatever comes back from the plugin and we're going to show an alert box with an uh, error or the success. Here you do real work in uh, most of your plugins when you got the data back. So for the service name, we're going to call our service hello. We're going to have a greet action, and we're going to pass the arguments world in. We're passing those arguments as an array of one element. And then we're going to call Cordova exec with those arguments. Uh, typically, when you're putting together a plugin, you don't want to have people call Cordova exec because it's a little bit clunky. So one of the things that happens is people will write some wrapper functions. So we could make a greet function. We would pass the name in first, and then the win and the fail. The nice thing about doing that is a lot of times those callbacks can be optional depending on what you're doing. So you can add them if people want them, but you could also just call greet with a name. In this case, we're actually going to need them. Looking at kind of the newer way to do things, um, you could also define a module. And I think that this is the way to go going forward. Um, the actual implementation doesn't matter as much here. But just basically, you can package your JavaScript in a way that is reusable. Uh, there's other things, we've, some plugins we've done where we just take uh, our plugin object for JavaScript and we just glom it onto the navigator object, or also sometimes create some top level, um, top level global variables. It really depends on what you're doing with your plugin for what makes sense. Unfortunately, there's a little bit of XML. We need to do some configuration. For uh, Android, there's a config XML, Blackberry, there's a plugins XML. Uh, prior to uh, PhoneGap 2, it was actually plugins XML and Android 2. So in that XML file, we're going to do that mapping of the hello service 
to the class that implements it. One of the interesting things is if you open up those plugins files, you'll see that in addition to the plugin that we're adding in there, there's plugins in there for all of the PhoneGap services. So one of the nice things is that this isn't just a hack to add plugins. PhoneGap is actually built out of Cordova plugins, so we're doing the same thing that Cordova is doing. On iOS, we do a similar thing. We have a P list where we map that same name to the implementation. One of the things we want to do here is uh, ideally I like to have the same JavaScript across all the platforms. And then if we use the same mapping here, we can have our native implementation, but our API will be the same. So theoretically, we get that nice uh, cross platform support. So let's start by looking at Android. Android's written in, Android plugins are written in Java. We're going to extend the Cordova plugin class. And we're going to put the source for the plugin right in the source directory that gets generated with our PhoneGap project. So there's a, an abstract class called plugin that we need to implement. And there's one method, execute, that we need to uh, implement there. So if we look at this, the name of the class doesn't really matter as long as we've mapped that in our plugins file. And the uh, action gets mapped from the action that was in our Cordova exec call, and the arguments get passed to us also. The callback ID is the one extra piece right there. The callback ID is set by Cordova, um, and we're not going to use it in the first case, but the second case we'll look at it. And basically the callback ID is used by Cordova to map, the, when you're returning results, which actual uh, JavaScript handlers it goes with. Speaking of sending information back, we're going to use a plugin result to do that. The plugin result is a status, which we have an enumeration of them, and an optional message that can go in there. And the message can be a string, a JavaScript object, uh, primitives, it's overloaded for a bunch of stuff. So we can send back, hey, everything went okay with our message. Or in some cases, we need to send back, hey, things went bad, and this is what went bad. Or potentially send back a no result. So we'll take a stab at the implementation here. We're going to get the name. We're going to concatenate it with hello. To create the message, we'll return status OK, and the message, done. Looks really good. Unfortunately, that won't compile. And the reason is there's a checked exception from uh, JSON array, get string. So we can fix that by catching the JSON exception and returning a plugin result of JSON exception. It's good when we're returning an error to try to match the enumeration closely to what happened so you get more information on the JavaScript side when you're trying to debug this or make things work. And so the interesting thing here is we had two callback handlers, a success callback handler and a failure callback handler. On the top there, when I return OK, Cordova looks at that status and says, OK, the status is OK, I'm going to call that win function. On the bottom, if things go bad, Cordova's going to say, OK, it's not OK, I'm going to call the fail function. And so it handles that mapping of which callback goes to us there. The other thing we didn't look at was the action. If the plugin implements one action, we don't have to worry about it. But typically, you're going to have multiple actions for your service. So in this case, if we had a greeting and a leave method, we would check that action when we come in, have a series of if, else if statements, do what we needed to do. Um, and then just to be nice, at the end, if we get an unexpected action, we should return invalid action, so that if you happen to have a typo, you actually get a good message rather than things just failing weirdly. Once we've done that, we can go into uh, the config XML file. We can add a line for our plugin, compile it, and run it. Even though it's simple, I wasn't brave enough to do a, a live demo here. Um, so the mechanics of uh, getting the hello world on the screen aren't that exciting, but the pieces that we went through, I think, uh, really helped spell it out. In the previous slide, we returned a plugin result right away. We're like, hey, this is what happened. Go do it. There's other cases where we don't necessarily want that to happen, and we want our interaction with the plugin to be a little more asynchronous. So this is where we could use the callback ID. We save the callback ID off to a member variable. We create a plugin result of no, with a status of no result. And then the important thing is we say set keep back true. It tells Cordova to hold on to those references. And we return that no result. Then sometime later in our code, maybe we scanned an NFC tag, maybe we crossed a geofence, some native code calls this method. We can then create a plugin result 
we can call the success, me success method with a plugin result and the callback ID, and then Cordova will call our JavaScript for us. So it's two different ways, really depends on how, what your plugin's doing, how you're gonna implement that. Next, if we go into BlackBerry. The nice thing about BlackBerry here is that almost everything I said about Android is true there. It uses the same JavaScript APIs and the same concepts really apply. So for iOS, theoretically it's the same thing. We're using the same JavaScript. Our implementation's gonna be a little bit different here. We're gonna extend the Cordova plugin. And uh, you're gonna have your header file and your implementation file. You put those files into the plugins directory in your Cordova project or your PhoneGap project. So if we look at our header file here, we're gonna extend the Cordova plugin. And then instead of having an execute method, we actually create an instance method that has our action name. And as long as we name that and we follow the signature where we're taking the arguments array and a dictionary of options, Cordova's gonna find our method and do the right thing. So it might make a little more sense if I show you two methods there. Um, I actually like this a little bit better sometimes than the Android one. The execute method in Android can get to be a little bit of a mess. This keeps things a little bit cleaner on, uh, on what's happening. So with the arguments array, that gets populated from the arguments that are passed into Cordova exec. With the options, what happens is if the last argument is a dictionary, it gets mapped into the options array there. The other anomaly here is that the first argument is the callback ID, and Cordova just kind of injects that for us. So this is the implementation of our greet method in the plugin. And this is gonna look very similar. We uh, get the callback ID as the first argument. We get the name. We concatenate, we create a message. We create a plugin result with a status of okay in our message. Up to this point, it's just a real verbose version of the Java code. Kind of funny that uh, Objective-C actually makes Java look terse. And then at the end, um, unfortunately, I don't know if you'll be able to see it in the back, we're calling success and passing the result and the callback ID. So this is where it's a little bit different. We need to look and say, hey, is this a success or is this an error and call the right method? The um, Cordova plist is where we do our mapping, very similar to before. We have our service name and we have our, uh, our uh, implementation name. And uh, I, there was, there's another style of uh, re returning methods too, and uh, so you may see this if you look at some of the uh, Cordova code. Instead of calling success, there's also another method. Once you have a uh, plugin result, you can call to success callback string or to error callback string, and then you can say write JavaScript and pass that JavaScript, which writes the JavaScript into the web view. So it's two different styles of uh, code you may see there. Gonna look at Windows Phone next. So with Windows Phone 7, we're gonna extend the base command. Uh, we gotta write this in uh, C Sharp. And there's a plugin directory. So we create our uh, .cs class, and we drop this into the plugin directory. Um, there's no configuration, which is actually kinda nice. It works really well there. The, this is kind of a mix between the uh, Android and the iOS. We're creating a method for every action that we have, but then at the end we can just say dispatch command result, and Cordova figures out whether it's calling the success or the error callback handler. So, kind of what things are in the future? The uh, problems that I've kind of thought about and run into when doing this is that, you know, maintaining multiple, uh, maintaining plugins across multiple platforms is kind of a hassle. There hasn't really been a good way to do that. And the whole building, packaging, distribution of plugins has been somewhat chaotic. Other things which I thought about, which I'd really like, was some sort of apt-get or npm for uh, plugins would be great. And then if you talk to the PhoneGap build guys, I think they get harassed a lot about uh, plugins running in PhoneGap build. So one of the steps in kind of moving towards this is the Cordova plugin spec, which is awesome. It's a great document. You should go read it and uh, especially if you're doing anything with plugins. And, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. 
One of the things the plugin spec does, it has a manifest file. And here's kind of a simplified version of the manifest file. But basically it lets me take all this information. Uh, well, first it provides a package or a suggested directory structure so we can organize our plugin. And then it, we take the meta information about the plugin and we basically tell it, hey, here's where all these pieces go, here's where the configuration is, here's all the, how these things work. And right now there's a tool called plug install. And plug install will basically, uh, you install this with NPM, and uh, you can say plug install with your platform, it supports iOS and Android right now, where your actual PhoneGap project is and where the plugin location is. So an example would be this, I'd say plug install iOS, current directory, and uh, from the home directory plugins, hello plugin. And what this does is it'll actually run some code, it'll move classes in the right place, it'll edit my Cordova P list, and uh, the plugin will be installed. It's really pretty cool. Um, so I think that's still just you know, getting started, but uh, I've run it and it works good. I think there's a lot of potential there. So I think the next thing is, you know, this is probably, hopefully enough to get you started. The next thing and the easiest way to do this is you know, get out there and pick a simple pro plugin and, and write it. Uh, go look at the Cordova code. There's lots of great examples of how things are done and uh, what kind of stuff you can do. You can also look at a lot of the existing plugins that, that are out there. Uh, the one caveat with that is if you look at some of the older plugins, they won't necessarily run in the latest code, but that's kind of being addressed. And so that's it. Uh, here's my contact information. I'm gonna put these slides and the sample Hello World plugin code on my GitHub account. It'll be on later this afternoon. And uh, if you guys have any questions, feel free to uh, come up and talk to me, or if you have any now, I'll be happy to answer them. Thank you.